First one's really important for Australian rules football is efficient and quality movement patterns. As we know, you're going to cover anywhere between 10 to 14 Ks uh, a game uh, and over a season where you're playing 20 to 24 games of Australian rules football, uh, depending on what level you're playing, uh, that's a lot of Ks in the legs, uh, not of just straight line running, but a lot of change of direction, sprinting at high speeds, um, jumping, landing, getting hit, getting back up off the ground. So with all of that, we want to make sure that we've we've got quality, sound movement mechanics. You're putting force into the ground in the right direction. Your body has got good connection from your ankle, knee, and hip. Everything's working, connected, and firing um, as one unit rather than overloading um, certain areas. And then the next part, and this is I had a recent catch up with the legend Dean Benton, who's an expert when it comes to high performance training. Um, in the track and field and rugby circles, um, but he also has a great understanding in Australian rules football. So it was great to be able to speak about um, the sport and, and where he sees it going and how important it is to maintain um, elastic uh, qualities, particularly. And I loved how he put it you don't want your older athletes dying a slow death. So if you're above the age of 30 and you're listening to this and you want to prolong your career and, and every year, especially for professional, you're adding. You're maximizing how much um, money you can make on the sport, but also how much you can enjoy the sport. Typically, your strength and your aerobic capacity is going to um, be easier to maintain because you've got a lot of pre-seasons and a lot of chronic load. Um, basically, you've been working in the system for a long time, well over 10 years, so you're well-conditioned in strength and from a conditioning point of view. And then number three, this is more from a psychology mindset point of view. Um, we want to make sure that you're having fun and you're enjoying the game. So staying curious and having a growth mindset, I believe, is really important in well, whether you're in rehab or just you know, your body's healthy and you're just wanting to maximize how long you can play for, um, making sure you connect to why you started the game. Typically, that's because you enjoy it and playing with your mates. So stay connected to that and tap into that energy, um, that play aspect of having fun and enjoying the, the process but also um, that willingness to learn an open mindset and growth mindset on learning new things and refining your uh, craft is really, really important. If you get stale and you feel like there's um, you're not growing as an athlete, typically that's when um, people either stop playing or they start to really burn out. So growth mindset's really, really important, staying curious and, and hungry and constantly asking questions on how you can improve. Tip number four, uh, routine. So making sure, I've talked about this a lot, but um, you're always going to get much better results um, when you're consistent at something. So there's no point um, trying new things all the time and, and then um, not doing it consistently enough to actually reap the benefits of it. You're going to get much better results when you do the um, when you do something for over a long period of time. Um, of, of course, you need to make sure that that one thing is effective and that it is worth the time and energy, of course, which only you can uh, evaluate that and coaches can help you. But if you know that it's a value for you, um, don't just drop it and then fo focus on the next fancy thing that you've heard of. You're much better on keeping those basics in and then just adding layers to it on how you can polish it up. Okay, so an example of that, let's just say you want to improve your recovery from game to game. You want to start with a post-game routine of some form of um, cooling down, 